Hello ladies, gentlemen, and everyone watching, this is Running on Linux, a distro review! So, um, today I have been taking a look at Linux Mint Mate and Linux Mint XFCE in a virtual machine. Now for those of you that follow this channel, my last video was talking about my experiences with Linux Mint, their flagship Cinnamon Edition. Uh, which looks absolutely amazing, runs lovely, and is just all around a fantastic distribution. However, running it on my Triton laptop, which is an entry-level machine, sort of uh, spun up the CPUs just a little more often than I'd like when I was, uh, you know, running tasks that were somewhat CPU intensive. So I was looking uh, and thinking about more light, lightweight options for it. So. Uh, logic dictates that I would go down the route of having a look at Linux Mint Mate and Linux Mint XFCE. Now, I uh, ran them in virtual machines, and the thing about Mate and the thing about XFCE is both of these desktop environments run really wonderfully in uh, virtual machines. Now, just as a little bit of caveat, whenever I do a review on, and this isn't really a review, this is just a bit of a quick look through a virtual machine, but whenever I talk about Linux Mint, I always feel like I'm repeating myself because Linux Mint is the type of distribution that has a very, uh, it has it has a very specific goal in mind. It has a very specific style of user interface in mind. It has a very specific idea of what their end user is looking for, what their end user might be, and they have a very good idea about the style with which they want to present their distributions. So they keep that uh, with a degree of continuity, with a very high degree of continuity, and that's one of the things that I really like about Linux Mint. When I administer desktop distributions to friends and family, uh, they're never particularly fond of drastic um, out of left field changes, specifically the ones that Ubuntu like to make from time to time, as well as you know Microsoft and Windows and so forth. So having a distribution, having an operating system that on the surface, when it comes to the UI, changes very, very gradually, uh, and only when the situation demands it, is appealing to a large number of people. So I think that there is a really large market share out there for Linux Mint. Uh, and as well as with Linux Mint, that it shouldn't be confused for a newbies only distribution. It shouldn't be confused. You shouldn't think of it as a distribution for dummies, because as you can see here, right from the uh, the screen cap, there is the, uh, the terminal in the um, in the taskbar down here, so they don't shy away from the fact that it is a Linux distribution. And in fact, if you look at the menu, you can even see that although it comes with a very good software manager, in fact, I've got it already open here, uh, and it's a wonderful software uh, manager, it also comes with Synaptic Package Manager right out of the box. And even, you know, it's included right here. This is very useful for when you want to micromanage on a granular level a granular level the packages for your operating system but if you want something broad and user friendly you ain't going to get much better than this interesting that the editor's pick is like straight up with minecraft i've never played minecraft ever i don't think actually i've seen a few people play it um and there's scribus and shutter and skype so these 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 are actually this is actually quite a good selection here because i can imagine quite a good spread of users uh First of all, recognizing a few of them. So Blender, that's quite well known. Obviously, Minecraft, very well known. Skype is well known. Um, but then there are other things like Gparted, Cheese, and maybe no maps, where new users to Linux might not necessarily rec um, recognize them. But because they are side by side with well-known apps, they might be more inclined to um, to give them a whirl. So the editor's pick here is actually quite nice. And of course, with Linux Mint, is that it does support flat packs. Now, some people have pointed out that referring to it as a flat pack section down here at the bottom, and you'll have to excuse that it sort of goes off the screen a little bit because, um, because uh, well, it's uh, it's a 720 uh, display here, um, but. Uh, so, so I suppose it, you know, like it, it, not everyone's going to immediately necessarily know what a flat pack is right out of the box. Um, maybe it could be better labeled as third-party software, for example, or I don't know, extra software or bonus. I don't know. You know, maybe, maybe there's a better term there for it. Uh, but you have got the Discord chat client there. You got the Atom editor. Uh, you got a Telegram there. A lot of people I know use Telegram, VLC, Signal. So uh, OBS Studio there, although I do believe that there is a version, uh, distro-specific version. There's Krita. I know a lot of people. Actually, check out Mastodon Art if you want a really uh, good look at what Krita can do. There's a lot of people on there that use Krita for their artwork, and boy, does it 
does it produce results? It looks absolutely fantastic. Gnome Games, never tried Gnome Games. Caden Live, a good package flat pack uh, for Caden Live. If you go on the Caden Live website, you will notice that they don't provide their own flat pack, I think. So this might be produced by or, or packaged by Flat Hub, possibly. I'm not sure, but the only um, the only one of these type of package managers that's supported uh, first party by Caden Live is App Image, which app, uh, absolutely works fantastic. So you've got some really good apps here, just straight within a few clicks away. And this, as a user interface, you can easily expect new users to to fit right in with it. Now, when it does come to uh, introducing people who are used to a Windows workflow over across. Uh, to Linux, I think the most difficult thing that they, they have trouble getting their head around is the difference in how in software is installed. Everything else seems to be completely easy, e uh, completely easy. And I think with the um, with with the um, uh, not necessarily the invention of the App Store, but the you know the the rise in popularity of the the App Store as seen through tablets and um, and uh, and phones and so forth, uh, it, it's easy. It's more similar. To the uh, to the distro specific repositories, so I think that people are sort of coming around. But this was this is a, a problem that at least used to happen. So um, the software manager has has always been an, a wonderful piece of software, and accompanied by Synaptic Package Manager because it is just uh, it's just so darn useful. So because you can because the thing is when you install a piece of software, it doesn't just install the one package; it installs the package and then some dependencies and and so forth. So. You've got the uh, the welcome screen here. Uh, it's the same as the one in Cinnamon, and also the same as the one in XFCE, and it gives you quite a few things. So you've got the the snapshots there. You've got driver manager. Um, can I launch the snapshots here? Now I've already set this up, so but I haven't actually uh, created any snapshots there. So what uh, what a smart person might do is to actually create a uh, a snapshot or have timed snapshots before they do an upgrade. Uh, just to make sure that um, that if an upgrade goes wrong, there is a there's a recourse, which is always pretty good. Um, and I've not actually had to put this to through the te to the test yet, but um, but it's nice to know that it's there. So this is a Mate desktop, but it looks absolutely beautiful, and it looks very similar to the Cinnamon desktop with a few. So this is the Mint menu. It's a little bit different, and it is more also quite customizable as well. Um, it's quite easy. You got a nice search there, and everything is quite intuitive. People, I, uh, Mate is a, is a desktop environment that I put a lot of newcomers to Linux on in general because it's probably one of the more customizable uh, desktop environments, as well as so you can make it look very much like uh, like Windows Seven, which many people consider to be the golden era of uh, of Windows here. But Mate is a particularly good desktop environment because it gives you. Uh, a great deal of granular customizability um, to to fit unusual hardware. And I'm going to give you a really good example, one that I actually find myself using quite a lot. Oh, there's QT5 settings here. I didn't notice that. So, ah. So there you go. So there, there's some good continuity between uh, QT apps there. Um, but what was I talking about? I was talking about, I'm looking for desktop settings. Uh, one of the things that I find particularly useful is being able to switch out your window manager with any of these seven, you know, you've got seven Windows managers there to uh, to pick from, and they all have their pros and cons and benefits. You know, some look nicer, some take fewer resources, some are better at de dealing with screen tearing and so forth. And just to be able to have that, um, because switching out a window manager on just about any other uh, desktop environment is 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 trickier because there is usually a window manager of choice for the desktop environment in question. Uh, yeah, no, Marte's not afraid to let you uh, go out on your own on this one, and you can even have compis if you like wobbly windows. So, but really, that's all I've got to say about it on, on, on this level, because, um, again, uh, you know, if, if you want to look at it with, or if you want to see me look at it with a bit more novelty, I guess, that the uh, have a look at me reviewing it of 18.3 um, or or 18.2, uh, or any of the previous other Linux Mint distributions. This is uh, the beta for Linux Mint 19. Now, the reason I'm going with the beta now is because because Linux Mint is based on the stable, long-term support base of Ubuntu, it's generally pretty stable. I don't think I've had any show-stopping, deal-breaking errors with a release candidate for Linux Mint in certainly in, in, in recent days, if not ever. 
Um, but then, it, because it is, it's it's a beta, but it is based on uh, on a on a full release of of Ubuntu. Now, uh, I think that really is just about everything. But I got to say, um, oh, and and apparently with uh, with Mate and uh, I, I don't know this personally, but the uh, H uh, the high definition uh, support is uh, is also improving there. So uh, it's worth checking out the the extras feature here. The X apps have have, have been improved. Um, so yeah. Uh, big fan of Mate as a desktop. There is one thing that I think is worth bearing in mind, and uh, I'm going to have to go to uh, Ubuntu Mate.org. I think might be the good one because this is the one that people I think would naturally compare it to. And I'm probably going to do a video if I haven't done already about the differences between Ubuntu Mate and Linux Mint Mate edition because there's a lot of similarities and there is a lot of overlap. But if I am not mistaken, I'll go to the download section here. Um, Supported, okay, yeah, so this is the long-term support release, 1804, supported until April 2021. Um, but this is supported until 2023. So if you're looking for that extra couple of years of support, uh, then Linux Mint might have you covered here. However, this is just the der uh, derivatives of the Ubuntu base that only have the three year support as far as I know. And I don't even know how much it differs from, from base to base. I think if we want, to, uh, but I think it is usually as, as a standard offering is three years of support on the derivatives and five years on, on Ubuntu itself. So I would be highly surprised if you were running Ubuntu Mate and you were suddenly cut off of all security updates after three years when Ubuntu got them ahead. In, you know, um, I, d I don't think you'd be out in the desert with no one to talk to if, if that was the, the situation there. But um, you know, you might they might sort of cons uh, expect you to to update to the latest long term support if uh, if it was after 2021 and you were say in need of support or anything. But that aside. It's a glorious distribution. It looks absolutely beautiful, and it is in line with Linux Mint in all the ways that you, were, you know, we expected and love it to. So I'm just going to zip this down here and zip that up here. And this is the Linux Mint XFCE edition. Very, very similar to both of them before it, but I would say this is the one that favors lightweight machines the most. And boy, have they made XFCE look absolutely gorgeous. I like this background wallpaper as well. Absolutely beautiful. Now, it uses the same Mint Y theme across the board, which is an absolutely lovely theme. And because XFCE ha has the, although it has the drop shadows that make the windows pop, uh, it does seem to run very, very well on low end hardware. So. I've got the update manager here. Update manager works great. In fact, one thing about the update manager I forgot to mention in the previous video is that even with the update manager, and I don't actually have updates to show you an example here, it tells you if it is just a a a, uh, a package upgrade or if it's like a security upgrade. So that is pretty cool as well. But it only gives you a little icon. So if you are a if you're a user that doesn't care, then it's not going to be something that uh, is going to be in your face, and you're you know it's not something that you're going to expected to know or expected to be expected to care about. But for the for those people that really only want to upgrade security components. Um, there is, you know, the distinction and the off the option there. Uh, there is an XFCE terminal, so they decided not to go with like a unifying terminal, like an X terminal uh, or X term, but obviously that name, that name I believe is already taken, of course. But um, so so they do use the desktop environment specific terminals there, but it looks nice. And it, uh, to be honest, uh, terminals a terminal, isn't it? At the end of the day, some there is some distinction between two. I've got to admit, the one that comes on KDE is is pretty full featured and rather nice. But to be honest, I don't think I've ever installed a specific terminal. I think maybe when I was trying out Linux v in the very early days, I might have installed a flashy terminal program here or there because I, you know, uh, because of the novelty factor. But nowadays, when we drop into a terminal, we we tend to do it for practical reasons, not because it's you know because there is any sort of enjoyment or recreational reason, but because a terminal, you know, you learn a command on a terminal, you learn a way of doing things on the terminal, you can take that with you to any other Linux distribution for the most part with only made, you know, minor changes. So, you know, if you, if you learn how to, you know, fix an, er uh, an error or, um, or run a program or anything like that, you know that it would be, you know, th there is this UI consistency across distributions. Obviously, um, there it's different when it comes to things like package managers. But to be fair, 
even package manager package package managers like um, like apt like um, DNF which is Fedora now and even Pac-Man there are a lot of similarities um, and there is a lot of con not continuity but uh, intuitiveness across those so if I drop from a Ubuntu distribution into an arch based distribution I don't it, it's it's hardly habit breaking or or anything like that um, so there we go and here's the settings for for XFC and I gotta say this icon theme let's have a look at the icon theme and it give oh it gives you a lot of color schemes as well that's one of the things I do like about XFCE is is just that it does um, is it is very customizable from from that degree uh, but yeah this uh, this meant oh and someone was talking someone left a comment in previous videos about uh, the fact that they don't like the mint green color well look at this blue do you like blue do you like brown do you like aqua yellow teal so there we go red purple pink there we go so there we go that looks pretty darn cool I don't know if the um, so yeah we get some uh, some icon themes here and I think so yeah we go so there's the um, th so that's the mint X pink so we don't have there isn't a mint Y pink I don't think so there we go and there's mint X dark but then we need to um, what do we need to do we would need to go to window manager settings and then we would want mint x dark there we go doesn't that look fancy now that that is something else. that's pretty good i don't know if the uh, the green and the pink would go together so i might, might do need to do a bit more color matching there but man i've never seen xfc look so damn nice that is absolutely fantastic um so there we go, and uh, there's new features in Linux Mint. Here, is there anything? Uh, sometimes when you do change the uh, the color schemes and whatnot, it is worth logging out and logging back in because, as you can see here, that back button uh, is um, it's not exactly rendering completely perfectly well because um, sometimes like icons don't Im immediately switch over. But you log out and you log back in, and everything sort of you know set up nicely. Uh, let's see so is there anything here so they usually put the XFCE stuff or the desktop environment stuff right down at the bottom oh by the way uh, yeah uh, XFAT is now supported out of the box here that's really good because I've got to say the first time I got an XFAT USB and it wasn't picked up I panicked so much it's like what what's this file system it's new and it's proprietary pretty sure XFAT is proprietary naughty windows yeah Microsoft says they love open source but they keep developing their closed source file systems uh, artwork improvements. Um, I think we did have a look at the uh, the backgrounds last time around, and then uh, yeah, this is also supported 2023. So there we go. Like I say, I don't really have too much in the way, uh, too much um, to talk about here because Linux Mint is that distribution that has a great deal of continuity to it. But having a look and a play around with XFC, the XFCE version of, of Linux Mint now, I am tempted to maybe install it on like an external uh, drive and then run the Triton off that. Because the reason I, I'm, I'm putting uh, Ubuntu Mate onto my Triton now, and I'm, I'm sort of leaving it on there now so that I can really rely on it a bit more. This laptop's getting more and more serious use, uh, usage out of it. So... Um, so I I think I might try uh, running di uh, distributions in different ways there. So that might be an interesting setup for a video in the future. But this I would suspect would run really quite nicely uh, as a live CD as well as a um, as an installed CD. Uh, but yeah, an, an XFCE desktop. It's in my experience user friendly, straightforward, and incredibly you know snappy and and has fantastic performance. So it does fit quite well within the Linux Mint philosophy it seems not that I'm uh, any kind of uh, spokesperson for it but mm. and I've, I've always got to say like there are three distinct versions of Linux Mint so if you go to the Linux Mint you've got the XFCE version you've got the Mate version and you've got the Cinnamon version the Cinnamon version is absolutely lovely as is the Mate version as is the XFCE version three versions does seem like quite a lot I do have to say 
But, you know, you've got the XFC version, which is lightweight, you've got the Mate version, which is customizable, and you've got the Cinnamon version, which is simple, nice looking, and straightforward and easy to use. So it does seem like they've got various bases covered. So that's just a few thoughts of mine on, on Linux Mint, I think, really. Um, but yeah, I, I just have to say it's, you know, I'm the bar's pretty high for Linux Mint, and it's been met. So uh, it's uh, it's a great uh, it's a great distribution, one that I, I've always felt um, deserves its popularity, and it's uh, yeah, like it's 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 it's, and also as well, and I'll, I'll, I said this in the last video, but I'll reiterate it. It's the distribution that requires the least setting up on my part. It's it's a uh, it seems like a distribution designed for home use, and it's seemed to be set up really quite well for it. I've got the um, text editor down here. Oh wow, the text editor doesn't that look nice with the dark theme? Uh, and that is XED. So you get XED, I believe, on all of the uh, as part of the X apps that uh, that come with Linux Mint. Um, hmm, all round fantastic distribution. I can't say a thing against it uh, give it a go even if it's just in a virtual machine um, yeah but uh, fantastic so uh, I think that's about it from uh, from me today thank you guys very much for watching um, I should promote some of my social media stuff at the end but I can't be bothered right about now so um, uh, yeah until next time I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome take care now <laughs>